Hey everyone, happy Friday night. We've got Tony and Jenny with Lalita Loca here with us. So everyone, um, welcome them in. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Well, thank you for having us. Hey, 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 what's up everybody? Yeah, thank you guys so much for having Look, I'm already emotional. You had your little wedding video. I, I don't think- <laughs> Pardon, tuck that in. <laughs> Beautiful, man. No, no, we took it out and somebody told us, put it back. So we put it back. <laughs> Perfect. So glad to be here. Thank you guys for having us. Um, oh, we are so excited to have you thanks, here. Thanks for Thank coming. you so much for coming. So everybody remember, if you have a question, just put it in like question in capital mark in capitals. Okay. So, um, so Tony and Jenny, when is your next cruise? March 23rd. 23rd. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, we were, we were trying to get something in. Uh, Tony's going in for a surgery at the end of this month. We're trying to get something in, but we just could not make it work. Mm -hmm. So our next cruise is March 23rd on Celebrity Constellation. Celebrity Constellation yeah. is 42 uh, minutes away. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. It'll be here before you know it, and then you'll be on the other side of your surgery and feeling better. So Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. You guys all had that, uh, so I wasn't going to go on the Sun Princess, but you guys had that craziness all going on <laughs> was, uh, yeah. before you went in for yeah. surgery. Yeah, I, I was going to keep up with where we were going to be on each day, but then it was just too torturous. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm somewhere in the med today, so I, I don't know. I know. Yeah. But, so. so. I think it's okay, maybe though, because it sounds like everything wasn't quite ready. So there's no point to go when you're not going to have the experience you're looking for. Yeah. So, absolutely. Yeah. There's not really been much conversation about it at all. I feel mm -hmm. like it's still at the shipyard. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting as we get a few more days into this whether the next cruise will. It wouldn't surprise <laughs> me if we, all of a sudden we were reporting some cruise news of maybe another uh, delay. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Either yeah. that or everyone just gets on on the port and stays there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> quick, quick shout out to yeah. Russell. Thanks, Russell. Gordon's going to do hearts yeah, for you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks for having <laughs> Thanks for coming. <clears throat> Thanks for that, Russell. Yeah. So um, welcome, everyone. We're sure happy to see all of you. We had a couple of fun questions that we thought we would ask um, while we have the pleasure of having Jenny and Tony with us. So how about what do you think when you think of the whole cruise experience what do you think is the most overrated um that you're like oh that's not that big of a deal about cruising and instead you focus on something else any thoughts um i think for me um maybe dressing up on formal night is a uh, little overrated for me that's a good one <laughs> You know, because I'd rather spend my time like, hey, let's just go to the buffet, not three hours in the dining room tonight, you know, mm -hmm. and then catch some shows and yeah. maybe go to the casino late night, you know, those sort of things. That's a really good point. I like that one, Jenny. I guess it's funny. Like, it is all kind of, it all connects to what you're interested in. For me, like, you know, I know that like drinking is a big part of cruising, but mm -hmm. the drinking aspect is overrated, right? Like, we got 18 yeah. different bars with 45 different mm -hmm. drinks, and it's like, as somebody who doesn't really drink that much, that's kind of like, well, okay, that, you know, it's, it's part of the cruising experience. And I know that a lot of people like that aspect of it, but for me, it's like, okay, I, I, it'd be cool if there was some other effort other than all the bars, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a, that's a challenging question. We talked about that. I really do like <laughs> of, the, of the, of the formal night because you, you kind of, I mean, it's nice to get dressed up, but it doesn't feel like it's as important even uh, that it was a few years ago. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, depending what cruise yeah. line you're on, you'll go to a main dining room and some people will be dressed up, some people won't. So that's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. And you yeah. pretty much just wear whatever you want. I remember when I went on my first cruise, it was so different than what I expected because I really thought that um, everybody was going to have a different outfit that they would be changing throughout the day. You know, just what you saw in Love Boat. Right. That it mattered so much more. So now I pack so much lighter. Now that I know you don't have to do that. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Like that. That's a good point. Yeah. And when you think of, um, so that's the most um, overrated part. Is there anything that you think people really miss that's underrated that all these people go and they don't think about? So, and like Tony said, we discussed it before. So uh -huh. I'm going to go with the formal night again, right? That it's underrated. Uh -huh. You know, <laughs> only because if if you you know if it's your first time cruising, second time, 
And it's even a lot of fun for us even now, you know, getting dressed up. It's kind of like a date night uh -huh. uh, on the ship and, and, you know, just enjoying a nice meal together and just chilling and relaxing. I like that. That's yeah. a good point, Jenny. And it doesn't even cost extra if you go to the main dining room. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For me, under, underrated, I still think people, I still think folks don't necessarily understand the amount of value that you're getting for a cruise. Like if you start to add up what you would spend on entertainment and what you would spend on food and what you would spend on experience and what you would spend on just having a great place to relax and enjoy your vacation. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I do think it's underrated. Like, you know, I, I think people that don't cruise, I don't think they have a conception of exactly how much value you're getting for your, even though cruising is expensive right now, uh -huh. you still get a lot for your cruising dollar mm -hmm. if you were to compare it with the land-based vacation. So um, mm -hmm. I, I still think in the travel space, it's underrated for its value. But mm -hmm. uh those of us that know the secret certainly understand. Uh -huh. no, well, that's perfect. And yeah. everything else has gone up too. When you look at cruising going up. So hotels, like look at hotels. Yeah. Yeah. And food. <laughs> yeah. Like one third more of the price, the hotels, mm -hmm. right? At these cruise ports, if not double. Mm -hmm. A whole lot more. That's a really good point. Yeah. yeah and I, I like, like your point about it being more than, than a land based um, mm -hmm. from our standpoint of, of, seeing so many variety of places and you know mm -hmm. the, the the secret like you talked about <laughs> you get on you unpack once and especially oh if God. you're going to the mediterranean if you're going on a baltic you mm -hmm. have such variety in that 10 to 14 day time that it's just incredible what well, you can in see the caribbean i love <clears throat> the caribbean oh yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah, so it's a lot of fun. Yeah, nobody has questions yet. Oh, we've got one right here. <laughs> <clears throat> Have you been on a Cunard? And what are your thoughts of a cruise that is heavily focused on enrichment? Would you like to go first? So we've not been on Cunard. Um, and then the enrichment, we, we enjoy Princess like when we went out to Alaska. And mm -hmm. they have a lot of nice lectures. Yeah. That's the thing that I think is neat. I think everybody has to kind of work on what their cruising profile is. And so mm -hmm. for us, we're fairly similar. You know, we could mm -hmm. during the day just chilling and relaxing and drinking coffee and hanging out and just, you know, working, those kind of things. That's usually what our cruise day is like mm -hmm. if we're not doing something at a cruise port. But then mm -hmm. the nights when it really kind of kicks off, we like to have a good meal, like to maybe see uh -huh. a good show, like to go to the casino. And so I think, the, you know, there's a few cruise lines out there that really scratch that itch pretty well mm -hmm. if you're also into enrichment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, QR is fairly formal. You know, that's one thing we don't necessarily like to dress up, but they do have a lot of great enrichment. But that's what I really like about, say, Princess in Holland is that you can still have good shows, you can still have casino, you can still have good food, but then they also do have some great enrichment through lectures. And what I like with Princess is that how they have the the cruise director not only be the person that's bringing the fun, but they're also, you know, on some level a travel expert and they're doing their travel talk. So I think right. um, I think there's definitely cruise lines out there that you can kind of have it all, but I think Cunard may swing a little too formal, a little too much enrichment for us. But if that's completely your thing, I think, I think it could be good. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, thank you for saying that. We're, we're exactly the same. I'm a little intimidated, like how truly dressy people are going to be every night for dinner. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. I mean, of course anybody can do it, but I don't know if, yeah, I don't yeah, know. We what haven't been on the Cunard yeah, either. Haven't either. Course, one time we were thinking about taking the Cunard just to get back from Europe yeah. you know, to, the, to New York city. And I told Tony, I'm like, you know, we can just really get an interior because we can't really walk around in these clothes. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. And you're going to be in the North Atlantic. So exactly. what's the view? It's just windy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I hear you. <laughs> That's a good answer. I like that. And I like that. Um, I really like that all the different cruise lines in to an extent have their own niche a little bit mm -hmm. so that you really can choose kind of what you want. And I don't think it always... I think it depends on what kind of cruise you want and where you're going and who you're going with, maybe what you would choose, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely agree. Yeah. To Gordon's point earlier, like when, when we go, like when you go to Europe, mm -hmm. it's so port intensive that the ship almost doesn't matter. Yeah. But then if you go somewhere where you've cruised a lot, mm -hmm. like say the Caribbean where, you know, we've been several times to the Caribbean, mm -hmm. 
then the ship becomes very important. So you yeah. almost end up with two different kind of vacations. You could have a very ship intensive. We're going for the ship. We want to go see the amenities of the ship. But then I, you know, when I went up to Canada, you know, last year, when I went to Europe, uh-huh. I can barely tell you about the ship because so much yeah. of that, like, all right, let's go another port, another port, another port. So right. it's interesting how cruising presents itself in those two different ways. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. And just, um, speaking of the ship and what's going on on the ship, I don't know. I don't mean to put you on the spot. Did you guys notice that Princess is doing a love boat cruise like August 31st? Yes. Like, yes. how fun is that? <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. a, it's a round trip, New York to New York. And I guess it's Isaac, Gopher, Doc, and uh, Vicky Stubing, so Jill Whalen. But yeah, uh-huh. that sounds like a, it looks like a really neat itinerary. We've got to be in New York a month later. Oh, right. yeah. we, we would have right. con- we were contemplating that uh, love boat cruise but uh-huh. but we've got to, it doesn't work out with some other oh, that is okay yeah, yeah. but i just thought uh, they're but, turning that ship into a destination with that aren't they yeah, exactly. <laughs> for sure exactly well, i never you know i haven't been on a theme cruise and you know a lot of the news lately talks about theme cruises uh mm-hmm. i did sign up for the first comic con cruise the official comic con cruise next year really- oh, wow but it's wild like when you start really looking into all these different theme cruises there's so many different things that you can get into, whether it's music or crafting or, you know, pop culture. So it's, uh, I really like that aspect of it too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Me too. It just changes the whole thing. So the ports will be nice, but we're going to all get home tired because it's going to be fun (laughs) and have all those ports. Yeah. Yeah. What do you like about the transatlantic, at least the way that we're doing it? Um, Mm -hmm. The transatlantic, the first one that I ever took last year went from New York to Rotterdam, and we had, I think, eight or nine sea days in a row. So you really had this opportunity to relax as you cross the sea, and -hmm. then it was just crazy, crazy, crazy. So I think that's going to be nice, and we're taking a transatlantic back from Europe. So we're going transatlantic over. Mm -hmm. We're going to do an MSC cruise for seven days. Uh We're going to hang out in Barcelona for five days, and then we're going to take a transatlantic back. So at least we've got that ride back to uh, to relax. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I like they change it by an hour every day, so that you arrive feeling refreshed, and then you arrive feeling refreshed again. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. that's really cool. I'm excited to follow along with you. You you kind of answered Scott's Scott's question there. Mm -hmm. What are your plans on your transatlantic other than chilling and doing work? Well, on the way back, we we look forward to hanging out with Scott. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, see. (laughs) On the way back. Yeah. So the 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 big plan. We haven't really booked any excursions or anything yet. We've got to start doing that planning, but. Uh The five days in Barcelona, that's that's going to be an interesting adventure because we've never really stayed in country for five days anywhere. So uh-huh. it's like, are we going to, how are we, you know, we got to figure out in a, and that, you know, it's predominantly, I think Spanish, a lot of places where you go, they'll speak English and their, uh, yeah. their local language. But yeah. I think in Barcelona, it's heavy Spanish. So we're going to have to learn to navigate in that period, like how to you know get food, all the kind of stuff. So it should be a really fun adventure, but there's a lot of cool stuff to do in Barcelona also. So yeah. Looking forward to that. Yeah. A lot, a lot of fun. And I think Barcelona is a nice city because there's a lot to <laughs> see, but not so much that you have to go crazy. It's a really nice place to chill yeah. <laughs> and just take it, soak everything in. Yeah. And they have that Sagrada Familia. And, you know, they're almost got all those towers done. You yeah. Probably read about that, but it's a really big deal. Yeah. That's on the list to see. And then I guess there's a pretty big. I like Salvador Dali, the uh-huh. art. Oh, okay. uh-huh. I guess he built the castle for his wife there. Mm-hmm. And so yes. I've looked at Verbo. There's like a couple like all day uh, Dali thing that you can do. They have an all day mm-hmm. Picasso thing that you can do. So I anticipate a little chilling and a little chasing down the art and uh-huh. and, and seeing the big church there too. Nice. So it's well, and Mary Tita had a good, they have a hop on, hop off bus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've, yeah. we've taken that. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic but they stop like at all the gaudy places anyway yeah yeah, i'm really excited for you guys five days yeah Yeah. another quick shout out to larry Larry. oh (laughs) we're happy to have you with us Lori. (laughs) gordon awesome yeah he's in charge of special effects (laughs) so it's just the apple any other questions right there we got a lot of questions here um uh tony jenny do you think the cruise lines will continue to offer more solo cabins they're kind of having a, I don't know. I don't, I just, it's a hard question. Yeah. It is, it's, it's a hard question. I would, I would hope that they do. Um, 
But, you know, they just want to fill up with as many bodies as they can. So I don't really see it going that way. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I, I agree with you entirely. So Laurel, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Let's see. So this is about the Princess app. Um, no, they don't have to download the <laughs> app. Um, especially if they're a minor, you need to do it for them. Yeah. 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 Quick question there. Let's see. Are you aware of any issues bringing a tense machine in our cruise? Nope, no, no problem with I've, that. I've taken mine <laughs> num numerous times. What's yeah. a tense machine? So it's it's the little sticky things that you put on your legs or, or your arms or something, and it gives electronic pulses. Oh wow! Massage. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. They are like twenty dollars on Amazon. Yeah, and I've got one. It's about the size of my phone. <laughs> you got these wires coming out, and then you put the things on well what i just i just had hip replacement surgery and every time i go down to physical therapy they slap one on so anyway but now you can bring them yeah yeah, Gary, yeah. Right. Pretty cool. that's interesting yeah, yeah. and i've even <laughs> found one that, that ties into your phone and uses bluetooth so you don't have to have the wires you can just put the the massage thing on you and do it wirelessly huh. yeah. That's kind of yeah. like Tony. Um, Tony and I have the CPAP machine. Yeah, and uh -huh. he was able to find a real small one so yeah. we could we could travel with it. That's really nice. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah I love that love mini. It. Is fantastic. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, it's the best. Yeah. yeah. So, here's a quick question we could talk about. Somebody said, "On Princess, one? do you see teens eating dinner in the main dining room, or is it mostly adults?" I think this goes across like all the cruise lines. Don't you guys think so? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I find that, you know, maybe it depends on what time of the cruise it is, but I've seen many families eating together. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I think that, uh, I think for the most part, parents are still making their kids do stuff. So, <laughs> which is appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> you're certainly, certainly going to see teens in the yeah. in the main dining room. But then, you know, it seems like as the, the cruise goes on, maybe you get worn down a little. We've never really cruised with teen kids, yeah, but I'm either. assuming that that's the way it would work by about the middle of the week. You're like, okay, go do whatever you want. But yeah, <laughs> okay. a couple yeah. nights, you're going to drag them to the main dining room. I don't know. My best friend travels with five of her kids that oh, yeah? every night they make sure that they have dinner together they're on the cruise yeah oh, and then they all disperse yeah you yeah. know so yeah. you know at least one time a day they are together in the main dining room yeah which is, and that's a nice thing about cruising i think because the whole family can be happy and right. still enjoy dinner and still do whatever they want yeah yeah, yeah. good question yeah oh thank you charlie very very much let me run down to charlie Thanks. we got larry sorry so <clears throat> just want to make sure Thanks, that we charlie we'll give him some lasers here. <laughs> Bryn's got that. Uh, that was cool. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Thanks. FaceTime cameras. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's really neat. Oh, um, retired will travel. Um, <clears throat> Jenny or Tony, would you like to talk about will watching? Uh, so when we went to Juno, right? It was Juno. Yeah. Um, wow. We that was was it the first time? Well, you had gone there with Dawn. Yeah. And then the second time we had gone, it was in August. Yeah. August. Uh -huh. Yeah. And they were just, the whales were just out like crazy. You got to see the bubble feed. Right. Yeah. They were so, bubble feed. It was amazing. I've been, I've been to June. I've been whale watching three times in Juneau. Mm -hmm. The first time I, we laid uh, like a pot of, of orca right. set down on us. And that was the most amazing experience. <laughs> I think I remember watching yeah. that video. Yeah. Right there, they were right there by the little boat that we were on. And then the second year that we went, we got to see the bubble feeding. And then uh -huh. last year it was just the tails. Uh, and that was in Juneau, but then uh, we got diverted away from a port and ended up at Icy Strait Point. And oh, yeah. we didn't do well watching that day, but we talked to several people that did do well watching that day. And they said that that was fantastic there also. So uh, definitely Juno, that's where the big excursions are for whale watching. Uh, and maybe if you're going to Icy Strait Point, and of course they have a big orca statue there, um, uh -huh. that might be a place to try whale watching also. Mm -hmm. Everybody could look, yeah. That's what I would say too. Yeah. So hopefully that helps you retired will travel. Yeah. Let's see. Carrie. Hey there. <clears throat> there you go. Jenny and Tony, what are the longest cruises you guys have ever been do have done? Yeah. So we did a 14 day through the Panama Canal. Mm -hmm. Have you done longer than that? Yeah, I mean, it was a couple cruises put together, yeah. but when I did the transatlantic on the Rotterdam, uh -huh. And it picked up a second cruise altogether. I was on that ship for 22 days or something mm -hmm. like that. But okay. yeah. 
I like it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, you know, I, I, I look at the world cruise and maybe once in our life, it'd be interesting to do multiple months, but uh -huh. I kind of like the cadence of going, but three weeks is nice. Three weeks and then come yeah. off of it and That's then enough. have a little break and get the uh, cruise blues and get ready to go back again. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I yeah. Like, yeah. I, I don't know, but I, I don't know if I could do like three months or something like that. I don't know the three months. I know the two weeks when we went, I was like, this is awesome. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get off. Yeah. yeah. Well, Carrie just finished. What was it? Fifty some days. He did a lot of days. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. 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 So he had a good time. No, that's nice. I don't think I could do a world cruise either. I think that's that's too long. <clears throat> yeah. I would want to come home. You got grandkids. Well, yeah. even I would just want to come home. <laughs> yeah. So, in terms of energy and vibe, what differences can I expect comparing Alaska and New Zealand to the Caribbean on Princess? Um, um, so, yeah, I mean, Tony's done both. I've not done the um, New, New England, England yeah. portion yet. Uh -huh. I, I think Ala I think Alaska, New England, I think, and you guys, you guys would know too. I think the Caribbean is probably the most lively vibe. You know, uh -huh. people are uh -huh. going to the Caribbean for mm -hmm. beach vacation, that kind of stuff. I do find that Alaska is a little more chill. I, I did find that going up to New England was a little more chill. I even mm -hmm. found that going over to Europe was a little more chill. So, I think uh, you know it. A lot of times people are just going to the Caribbean to go to a beach, right? So, but yeah, I think it's definitely more laid back going to those other places. I don't know if you guys have had the same experience. But. No, I think you're, that's what I think too. Yeah, that's been our experience as well. Yeah. So, yeah, Bill, you're going to have a really nice time. You and oh, yeah, day. no matter yeah. where you go, but yeah. <clears throat> definitely. Yeah. Let's so, see. Do you oh. guys like sea days or port days better? <laughs> I guess it depends on where you're going. I like the sea days. Um, yeah. I think because, well, I, I, I can I say I like them both? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> well, I love the sea days because like nothing's on the schedule, right? And it's just such a nice feeling knowing like, okay, if I wake up at, you know, 930, it's okay because I don't have some place to run off and, you know, go see. And then I also like the port days because if it's a, a port like in the Caribbean that we've been to before a couple of times, we usually will just stay on, catch up on work. And it's nice because the ship is empty. If we want to go hang out at the spa, we can go hang out at the spa. So I, I kind of like both. Yeah. I was going to say it, it really is depending where you're at. So like mm -hmm. in Alaska, I like port days because I know I'm going to go do some right. exploring. Uh, in Europe, I know I'm going to go do some exploring in the Caribbean because we're, you know, we're not really beachy, fun in the sun type yeah. people. And we've done some excursions. I love a port day in the Caribbean because I know I'm going to stay on the ship and get to experience the ship without a bunch of crowds. So uh, it, it, it's a mix, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's yeah. for you guys. Well, I think one thing is last year when we were on the vloggers with you, Tony, we missed, uh, what was it, Roatan or Honduras? And I remember um, waking up that morning and I was just so tired. <laughs> and when they said, oh, it's a, it's going to be another sea day, I'm like, yippee. Yay. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the dry sea day is nice. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. nice. you don't be. have to get up early. Yeah. But, yeah. but otherwise, uh, yeah, like you said, it, it depends on where you when, when you're ready to explore and really get out there and see what it is that you're there for. Uh, we did an Antarctic one, which was 16 days and what was it? Seven or eight? No, 10 of them were sea days, yeah. but it was fantastic. Right. Because you still were, were looking at, at what was there in Antarctica. You were going up the Chilean fjords. So it was still a lot to take in. Yeah. Yeah. But you could rest a lot. Yeah. And then other days, yeah, when we've been where it's been. That pen's on. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it's like, okay, a nice sea day. I'm not I'm not doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, we're with you guys. There's good to both. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have an absolute favorite cruise, like out of any that you have done, or a very favorite, like if you could put together your favorite cruise, what would you do? Um, so I think that there's, I mean, all of the cruises, right, that we do are super special anytime that I get to spend mm -hmm. with Tony out on the sea and, and you know, <laughs> I think she likes you. <laughs> um, but what I think what sticks out to me is the first time that we were on the Oasis of the Seas. Mm -hmm. It was just so magical um, and not overwhelming, but just 
emotional, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Just amazing. Like, wow, this is out on the ocean. This is like a city. Yeah. And then my second, well, Cuba was just amazing to me because of my heritage from there. Oh. Um, that was a really great cruise. And of course, I just love Alaska. And now I'm excited because I'm going over to Europe for the first time. So that's exciting. Yeah. You're going to love, love it. Love it. Yeah. yeah. You're going to absolutely love it. Yeah. What about you, Tony? It's, it's so hard because it really is so many different layers to cruising. Mm -hmm. The Oasis still holds a special place for me just because we had just, we really had the shared moment that it's, I don't know that we've had that. We, we've, we've been fascinated before, but I can distinctly still hold on into my mind's eye that moment that we had when we got on the Oasis and we had this moment seeing Central Park, which was great. But then, you know, being able to put physical locations to things that you've only read about in books or mm -hmm. in your mind's eye, like, you know, going over to Europe and seeing windmills or going to Asia and seeing a temple in Tokyo. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's hard to pick, you know, being in, you know, Sydney for the fireworks. So many of those iconic things are now a part of my journey. Uh -huh. It's hard to pick which one's the, the favorite. Yeah. It's like, I definitely have moments that uh, that connect me and connect us together greater, but then I have these mm -hmm. adventurer moments too that connect me to the, to the broader to world. The, yeah. It'll blow my mind when I think about them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very much so. I like that a lot. Yeah. yeah. I Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Thank you. I'm with you. Yeah. I think right. we've had memories together <clears throat> that we would have never had had mm -hmm. we not gone on a cruise. For sure. Yeah. 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 It just would not have happened at home or anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, we've had some memorable, like the Antarctica one. But I think about one, the second time we went to Alaska, I think it was kind of cool because it was a last minute thing. It was very last And we minute. just flew up there and we got on the ship and we were. Both really stressed from work. Yeah. <laughs> and it was just <laughs> we a total to de-stressing. Yeah. So that we fully in got into the enrichment and everything. So that, nice. that one kind of stands out there. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. 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 Thanks, you guys. Let's see. Why um, not see? First okay. time on the Enchanted in 36 days. Oh, Been the on differences Celebrity. differences between Celebrity <laughs> and Princess? Wow. That's a harder one. What do you guys think? They're quite similar in a lot of things. They're very similar. A lot of times we, um, like I distinguish, like, Hey, one is jazzy, one's classical. <laughs> there, like, that's a good one. Yeah. I like that. I like that comparison. And yeah. I, I kind of, and not really an age thing, but it feels like the the crowd on celebrity might still be people that are you know working in the corporate world, yeah, on their way to retirement. Where Princess feels like maybe we got a lot more people that are already enjoying that retirement. So it's, yeah. yeah, I kind of feel like that's part of the vibe on those two ships also. Mm -hmm. Very much. That's so. a really good. Yeah, I like that. that. Yeah. Until we all get on the Sun Princess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that'll be fun, and that's going to be fun to see, like moving forward, how that evolves, right? Mm -hmm. it, does, yeah. it does seem like they're encouraging more kind of family and maybe even teenager type stuff with some of the new amenities on Sun. So, uh, you know, and that, that's the interesting thing. It's hard to pigeonhole some of these cruise lines. You know, folks will say, well, Princess is just older people, but we, you know, we've seen people of all ages mm -hmm. on all of those cruise ships, but, you know, but, you know, but then it does kind of, you know, the majority does, you know, end up being a certain time. Um, well, and the, quite honestly, there's a couple of families that um, have, have gone on Princess just because they don't have a lot of children on there. Yeah. So the <laughs> childcare is just so much greater, right? Like a lot of times it's one-on-one -on -one or, you know, very minimal children in, in the childcare. So, yeah. you know, they do choose those lines instead. Uh -huh. That makes a lot of sense rather than where there's going to be a lot of kids. Yeah. yeah. It's an interesting point. Yeah. A lot of people say they like um, kids, but they don't want to cruise with them if they're not theirs. Okay. So that's a good, that's a good option for those people. <clears throat> yeah. I like that a lot. Thanks. Let's see. Have you, you, go ahead. Oh, so have you guys ever thought of going on a Great Lake cruise on Viking? Um, I mean, we've teeter tottered back and forth about. <laughs> I just, not right now. Does it, does it feel like my jam? Like, you know, I've watched some videos of uh -huh. river cruises. 
river cruises in Europe, they look exciting. You can go to a lot of cool places, but then I've watched some river cruises in the U S and I'm like, ah, that does, I don't know. You know, especially like if you're looking at American going up and down the Mississippi and those are all cities that we're familiar with. Anyways, we live in yeah. right on the cover yeah. of the river and it's like, eh, you know, not a lot of entertainment, no casino, small ship getting off in Nashville. Doesn't seem like my jam. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. we visited, like you said, we yeah. visited and we know a lived cities, in a lot yeah. of those cities. So. Uh -huh. yeah. so you don't need to go very good. Yeah, I hear you. Well, and you know what, Sam? Right I, too. It's very expensive, right, to river cruise. They are very expensive. I think river, in my mind, um, I prefer ocean cruising to river cruising. We did a river cruise last, um, like, March. at the beginning of April. And yeah. it was really nice to get to go see those places and to see what the scenery looks like along the river. And if you have like X number of days, it's a good way to see all that. But um, I don't need to keep doing that. We're going to do, do a Christmas market one because I want to go see that that way. But I don't need to keep doing that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it'll be like a, a one and done thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like being in the Great Lakes. All canal experience. Yeah. We're glad that we did it, but I don't know that we would do it again. Yeah. See? See? And when I look at the Great Lakes, I think it would be really cool to see. But I also think I can do that when I'm really old and can't go other places, right? Might Not that you have to be really old to do that, but that's... <laughs> yeah. No. That's you don't, want to, you don't want to travel as far, but you still want to do something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's good planning. Anyway. <laughs> Let's see. What major cruise lines do you think are at the top of their game and which would you like to see some improvements? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think it's all relative to to the ships, right? So, I mean, it, it, it would be hard to argue against the fact that Icon of the Seas right now is the most innovative and advanced cruise ship out there. Uh, but I'm sure you could go back and find an older Royal cruise ship and go, okay, that could use some improvement. Certainly, we tried the three new Carnival cruise ships, mm -hmm. and uh, those are as nice and as advanced as any Carnival cruise ship that we have ever been on. Uh, you know, the new uh, the Norwegian ships, the Prima, the Viva, those are, you know, they're going through a whole growth thing with yeah. the, you know, growing pains, things with those ships, trying to determine the sizing of their venues and stuff right. like that. But they're trying to be innovative, virgin, innovative. So I, I think that you can look at every cruise line and point to where those cruise lines are innovating. And I think the major cruise lines are all innovating in a really positive way. Right. But then the, it's still going to leave part of their inventory, part of their fleet uh, that that aren't as advanced. Like if you, you know, if you like go the on the Island Princess, yeah, compared. Island Princess, yeah. If, yeah. You go on the, if you go on the Jubilee and then you go on the Carnival Elation, right. it, it's going to be different. Really different uh, what yeah. I am excited that I see in most of the cruise lines are this move to improve their connectivity, improve their internet. Yeah. And I know that's not important to everybody, but I think we do live in a time where there's a lot more remote workers. There's a lot more people mm -hmm. staying connected. And yeah. so I'm excited with anybody that's, you know, getting Starlink running and getting a faster internet play. Absolutely. I like that. And the other, the thing I think when you think of like the differences in the ships, like you said, you go on like the celebration and then you go on the elation and the difference. I really like they have both because it fits everybody's budget yeah. and yeah. everybody's, um, you know, shorter cruises. If you have not quite as much time off work or whatever your goals are, because sometimes you want to take your whole family, but you look at taking them on, you know, if you looked at taking them on Icon of the Seas, it would be like, oh my goodness. But right. the election, yeah. you can maybe think that's okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I, feel like, I feel like Princess does it really well, right? Like the island, the island Princess is an older ship, not as up to date as what mm -hmm. they have out there now, like yeah. Enchantment and all those. Uh -huh. But what I love about that is that they do really great itineraries with the island princess, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So it gives you the best of both worlds, right? A lot of times you're just going to the destinations like Galveston. We went out there, the destination was really the ship, uh -huh. right? So yeah. with, with the island princess, it's great that princess has that thought process of like, hey, people are going to come on the island princess because yeah. of where we're going to visit. Yeah. yeah. That's because yeah, Island's on a world cruise right now, right. going to yeah. a lot of great destinations. That's the cruise ship we yeah. took through the Panama Canal. So uh -huh. exactly what you're saying. It's neat that they use some of this older inventory right. to really go out and explore ports right. and, mm -hmm. and use some of the newer ships to let the ships be the destinations. Mm -hmm. so all the places. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. So I think all the cruise lines, too, are just I think I really think they're all doing their best. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. all trying hard, you know. 
even Margarita, Margarita Villa at sea, right? Like they're trying to, so, <laughs> you know, they're coming to Tampa and um, it's, they're, they're not going to be doing like the overnight and stay in Freeport and then bring you back. Like they're going to like four and five day itineraries. Uh-huh. So even then, like they're trying to improve what they're doing also. So. Yeah. yeah, they are. And they got a second ship, didn't they? And yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. They're, they're trying. Yeah, absolutely. So it's good to support them. So do you want to? Yeah, let's pull up. Let's see. Oh, it's cruise number 234. Our email here. I went through total withdrawal during COVID. Oh, I most must sincerely thank you for your daily updates, which mopped me through the entire COVID tragedy. <laughs> there you go. Hats off to you. Can we do a, like a fireworks for them? For 200? <laughs> yeah, I do fireworks. Love to do fireworks. Yeah. 234 <laughs> cruises. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> But, uh, let's see. Let me see. Fireworks. Fireworks. We, we've been uh, humbled and fortunate oh. to hear people say to us that the work that we did while, during the shutdown mm-hmm. was meaningful and, and helped people keep people connected. And one thing that we always like to share is it did the same thing for us. Absolutely. The fact, you know, we were locked down in this new place that we'd moved to. The fact that we were able to make content on a daily basis and have connection through the comments and through the community it kept us sane too. So yeah. uh, thanks for the the kind words and uh, you guys helped us out as much as uh, hopefully we helped you guys out. So thank you very much. Yeah. Well, and I you don't, you, you don't that. know this, but we watch we watched you before COVID and then, but then during COVID boy, every day at lunchtime, we sat down on the couch because <laughs> we were both working from home and ate our lunch while we watched you. Aww. And um, I just tell you forever, I have wanted to do YouTube for like years and years. But you know what? I would honestly say that watching you two, I just thought, you know what? I'm going to try this. You were I'm the true try inspiration. This. Like truly. So thank yeah. you. So you kept us sane <laughs> even when we got COVID before there were vaccines because I went to work and shouldn't have. And um, um <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Yeah, I mean, wow. thanks for saying that for all of us. Yeah. Those are kind words. Thank you for sharing yeah. that. Well, Absolutely. I mean it. So scroll down. Um, and I have to I have to say, Tony, last year when we met you and Dawn oh. on the Vloggers Cruise, um, it was an iconic moment for us to walk up. We didn't have to introduce ourselves. And you said, hi, Gordon. Hi, Allison. And we, were like, <laughs> we about fell over. We had to go back to our cabin and sit down for a minute. <laughs> well, it's, it's, been a, it's been an interesting seven-year journey. And, you know, it, it's, it's a wild ride. But, you know, we, we love this community. And we feel like we've, we've tried our best in the ways that we know how to foster community. And sometimes it works out good. Sometimes it doesn't. But uh, at, at the end of the day, we, we still, you know, uh, try our best to see who's doing stuff out there and stay connected and, and be a part of the community just because, you know, it's, it was a core belief for us seven years ago. People would say, uh, you know, how, how do you do YouTube? And I didn't have a lot of experience, but we would share everything that we knew yeah. because I truly believe that uh, you know, the demographic for cruising is a little older. Uh, at that time, seven years ago, it seemed like a lot of people that were watching YouTube were a little younger. Right. And so I believed it then and I believe it now that the more people that are making content around cruising, the more people that are talking about cruising, it just expands the reach for all of us, right? Yeah. And so uh, right. uh, I think that's the magic of this community because it's fairly a uh, new space. It is. Uh, YouTube videos, you know, uh, even if it's only seven years old or 10 years old, it's not very old. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I, I think that's really the magic of and that. And that's why I really enjoy getting to meet people when we go out. It's just because it, it's like, wow, there's somebody that I've only seen on my TV and they're right there in front of my, <laughs> I still get, you know, I have that too. So uh, yeah, <laughs> really great, really great to meet you guys on the vlogger shows. It was really nice to meet you. And Jenny, we missed you just so you know, I've still got to see you sometime. Yep. We'll, we'll catch up with you. You will find you somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So I'm what are your loyalty not. status? What's your favorite cruise loyalty program? Got anything on that? <laughs> so I really love, um, I, I love the Royal one uh, just because we don't really drink a lot of alcohol. So mm-hmm. it's nice when you reach Diamond and they give you like four free drinks a day. This way you don't have to buy a, a drink package. Uh-huh. Um, I don't really, and I, I like carnivals. Once you reach Platinum, you get, you know, um, embarkation, like a nice little area and free laundry, which is super important. Free laundry is really nice. Yeah. The fun thing in the beginning 
and I'm a little bit of a contrarian. It's it's my <laughs> nature. But I was very anti. I would run into folks that are like, oh, I'm you know I'm trying to get this loyalty thing, and I would look at the loyalty programs, and I'd be like, well, I don't feel like you get a lot, you know, like you know, I'm grinding to get a free bottle of water. Right. Yeah. You know, why, why would you <laughs> buy the water or whatever? Yeah. So, uh, but because we cruise a lot and then there were a lot of good double points and those kind of things uh-huh. after the return to cruising, we just kind of fell into some loyalty. So I think mm-hmm. we're like platinum on princess, oh, that's right. awesome. diamond on Royal, we're uh-huh. platinum on carnival. That's awesome. Elite with celebrity. And so now we're now it's really interesting, right? It's like, oh, can we get some laundry or can we that I think you know, we lucked into, you know, just by cruising a lot, we lucked into our loyalty. Mm-hmm. And I still would challenge people that when you first start cruising, try a few different things because you you know, it blew our mind. We cruised maybe three carnivals and apprentice before we got on Royal Oasis, and then we were like Wow. This oh is gosh. interesting. This is a you know. This is uh, okay. Didn't know this was out there, and it really kind of opened. Up, like, let's try it. Let's try a lot of different stuff. Not everybody has that opportunity. And again, I don't think there's anything wrong with grinding out loyalty, but um, I still think I still think trying to seek out your your best cruise experience in the beginning is more important than the loyalty. But then once you find it. Uh, get that loyalty. Well, I, I really love the fact that the Royal Caribbean group, you know, if you're, if you're, as it should be. Yeah. yeah it, it just goes throughout the whole corporation. Yeah, mm-hmm. I do too. Mm-hmm. I agree with you there. Yeah, yeah. Really nice. Yeah. No, I like that. My favorite thing with princess is when you're elite, you get that mini bar set up. Yeah. yeah. So you can have all the diet Coke you want. <laughs> well, not all you want, but they sure give you a lot. Yeah. So it's enough. Yeah. Awesome. I don't think we take much advantage of that. Do oh, you said elite, right? Yeah. Do they restock it all the time once you? Mm-hmm. Or it's just a one time. No, they just do it one time. But okay. if yeah, so but you can ask them to trade out whatever you don't want. Yeah. Right. With yeah. for whatever it is you yeah. want. Yeah. yeah. We don't drink, and so she gets. I think it's twenty four cans of. Yeah, like twenty four or twenty. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, for a week for like. That's that, awesome. Yeah. Weeks. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Nice. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. It's the funny little things. But when you <laughs> mentioned like. Uh, Getting loyalty for a bottle of water. Yeah, you must be with Hilton also. <laughs> I, like I tell you what, Hilton though, points. we we started using Hilton with our Amex. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We stayed at Hilton everywhere on this last trip, and we had all kinds of food credit, which was the first time. Yeah. Like nice. we, we had a, like a forty dollar food credit, and we and then one of the Hiltons that we stayed at, they had the room stocked with snacks. We had like yeah. drinks yeah. and snacks and. I don't know. We're, we're, we're just trying to get better, more savvy at using cards to get stuff. And uh, yeah. we're, we're trying to figure that out. But yeah. So you have the Hilton Amex then? No, we just have a, we have the, what is it? The Platinum Amex. Oh, okay. okay. But it gives us Hilton stuff and other right. stuff. Yeah. Right. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. No, that's cool. Because they had it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Let's see. We kind of talked a yeah, little bit about did. this. Was it too long or short? We talked about that a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Anything you guys want to add? Either one of you or we're good. I think my 22 was long enough, uh, but that was my longest. And then Jenny was – we were 15 days, I think, on that Panama. Well, right. 15, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah, that seems long enough. So, ah, we were going to ask you this. What is your bucket list destination or destinations? It's hard to have just one. Yeah, yeah. so I am um, actually going to be doing mine in a couple of – couple of weeks uh-huh. but you know going over to europe and and mm-hmm. checking out italy and um spain of course and just yeah. all those nice ports that we have scheduled for europe i'm i'm super excited about that i'm excited for you get the gelato in rome gelato oh, wow. again and again and again <laughs> anyway <laughs> I don't, think, are we, I don't think we're going to Rome this time. Oh, okay. I look at the cities. But yeah, yeah I, I think, think it's Naples, Naples and Genoa. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. They'll have gelato there too. Yeah. yeah. What about yeah. you, Tony? Yeah. It's the same. Like, you know, when you start to travel, there's just these pockets of places that you can go. And it was, you know, I was fortunate to do UK and Northern Europe last year and Australia last year. Mm-hmm. And so the med this year is going to be amazing. But of course, you know, I would love to go to the Eastern Mediterranean. I'd love to go to Israel, that kind of thing. And of course, that's not going to happen for a while. Just like St. Petersburg is kind of still off of the list, the, you know, the Baltic. But, um, mm-hmm. The fortunate thing is uh, there's so many places to go 
that yeah, it, it's going to be it's going to be amazing just to go see all of those countries on this transatlantic. So it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of scratching uh, check marks on the bucket list in the next couple months. <laughs> Yeah. And then enjoying it with with you, which is yeah. exciting. But I would still like to, you know, yeah. the, the, when I think about North America, I'd still like to go uh, to Iceland and Greenland. Absolutely, you know, that would be yeah. a cool place to see. And then there's so much to explore in South America and mm-hmm. I don't know South Pacific. You know, I'll, there's a lot. Of, I'd, I'd love to go back to Japan. Uh huh. Did you know that? So Holland America has this cruise round trip out of Fort Lauderdale that goes down and goes partway down the Amazon. If you know oh, wow. that. I know, I know. Doesn't that sound cool? Yeah. Holland does so, you know, Holland's Holland, itinerary is, Holland is fantastic. Really great. Yeah. Before everything went down in, with Israel, we had that cruise booked where you left mm-hmm. Fort Lauderdale, went all the way through the Med. Oh, did you have that one? Came all the way back. We were going to do it later in the year. Uh, but, like November. Yeah. But we ended up canceling because oh, of the, yeah. yeah, we knew those, the turmoil there is going to be, yeah. Too much. Yeah. yeah too much. I'm so excited yeah. though. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully everything can come down over there long enough that we can go yeah. see it all. Well, I think you just answered this one about why you've got those transatlantics. And why did you choose them? So you yeah. don't have to fly, right? And so to enjoy that was that, the thing, that's yeah. true. Yeah. So we leave out of Tampa, go to Barcelona, jump on MSC, mm-hmm. and then five days in uh Barcelona, and then we take Carnival back. And leaves us in Port Canaveral, so that's why those were chosen. It's kind of it's kind of funny because Constellation we're taking it over to Barcelona so it could go into dry dock, and then we're taking Glory home yeah. um, <laughs> as soon as it comes out of dry, uh, out of dry dock. So. Yeah, the, the ships are a little older; they're not super sexy, but uh, the, the big destination, motiv- destination. The big motivator was the destination, <laughs> yeah. and then being able to get to Europe without flying. Right. That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's the. To, that's the civilized way to travel. Yeah. To take those transatlantics. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be nice. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Most scenic sail away port. Oh, hey, wow. Mark. It's good to see you. What would you guys say is the most scenic sail away port? I love Miami. When we go out of Miami, Miami it's Miami yeah. really beautiful. Uh-huh. Um, you know, and it, it, it seems like, oh, this is the start to the beautiful, sunny Caribbean. Um, and I think I've not been out of New York City yet, and I, I, I'm pretty growing up there. I'm just pretty sure that it's pretty amazing. That's what I was going to say. Like uh, two two major sailaways that really mm-hmm. blew me away: uh, sailing out of Sydney Harbor past the Opera mm-hmm. House, oh. past oh, the yeah. Harbor Bridge. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was that was amazing. And then sailing out of New York and just contextualizing it as you you know sailed past the Statue of Liberty. That you realize that so much of the influence of this country, mm-hmm. people sailed in past the Statue of Liberty from places and mm-hmm. made a life. So it, it, you know, you really can get into it when you're going out of New York and just seeing Manhattan and the skyline mm-hmm. and just realizing that that journey that you were on was not uh, not unique to you. That that millions of people had made yeah. that journey. So it, uh, New York was really cool to mm-hmm. sail out of. Yeah, That's you really like that. No, did, yeah. yeah, and I th- and yeah, and when I looked at that Statue of Liberty, especially coming back early in the morning, and she was lit up, I just thought of all the hope that that represented for so many people coming. Absolutely, when they yeah. saw that, they knew they were here. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Did you know why a lot of New York? <laughs> <laughs> <Can't> well, uh, <laughs> just Jenny's New York joke. <laughs> so you know, there's a lot of people that live in New York that are named Tony. Uh huh. And you know why? Because when they were coming in, there was a sign above the door that said two and why. <laughs> <laughs> so they took it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I like that joke. <laughs> That's really cute. <laughs> Let's see. Here's a question. Where's Don? We got to get Don, <laughs> don't we? Hopefully he's snuggled at home doing well. I talked yeah. to him. Yeah, <laughs> poor guy. He's, he's in Ottawa. I, I, you know, the very specific question I ask him is, how you doing? Are you getting back into your daily routine after the crazy travel? And uh, he is. He seems to be doing well. But uh, when they can't, so we had booked our son, Princess, just on our own. Uh-huh. And then uh, Princess had reached out to us saying, hey, we'd love to put you on the Sun Princess. And we were like, oh, we already booked it. So when they canceled, the, the PR team, were, they're like, we have these media sailings. But there are only five-day sailings happening in March. Mm-hmm. And Don's going to do one of them. So right. that's all he's so going to That's all he's going to do, though. So he's he's already, you know, he's got five days worth of travel to do five days worth of cruising on the oh. new ship. 
And so uh, I'm like, dude, just relax. Just, <laughs> just you know, enjoy. So that uh, that's his next adventure. But he's got a couple of weeks before he gets into it. But yeah, Don's doing good out there. So. Is he doing yeah. good? I'm yeah. glad. Good. I'm excited for him. Really yeah. excited. Yeah. Good. To, that's a good question where he is. What cruise line do you recommend for Alaska? Oh, I think you should go on Princess. <clears throat> and if you don't want to go on Princess, go on Holland America. What would you guys say? That's what I would say. I, I would say that also. And um, But don't disregard the other cruise lines. Only because okay. Alaska really is so much, I feel um about the ports right so mm -hmm. I, I know last year we went on an old carnival spirit mm -hmm. and had a great time just as just as much as princess but i do feel like princess and holland um have really nice like land before you know land to see yeah. mm -hmm. and um just their enrichment like we were talking about in the beginning yeah, yeah. yeah we've done Carnival, Norwegian, and Princess in Alaska. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We'd really like to add Royal and Holland just to understand right. the experience. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to beat that Princess experience. It really yeah. is. Like yeah, the, absolutely. From yeah. the, you know, like they have the, the best naturalist on there. It's, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, the naturalist is great and they bring in the dogs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else could you want? No, somebody yeah. was telling me all about Carnival to Alaska not too long ago. And I do need to do that because of everything they were telling me. It's different, mm -hmm. which, which which I love. Like it would yeah. be so boring if we went and everything was the same, you know. But yeah. Well, we were on the on the carnival, remember you took the ship off of the ship? Yeah. What so was that, that was nice. They uh -huh. and not, you know. The other thing that you want to consider when you go on these cruises is does the cruise go to Glacier Bay National Park? Yeah. Like Royal Caribbean doesn't do that. We didn't do that on the Carnival ship. We went to Tracy Arm Fjord. Uh -huh. and they did have a nice excursion that they took you right to the face of the glacier, which was really cool. So, yeah. it, it, you know, it just depends. I would say the first time you go to Alaska, try to make sure that you have an itinerary that goes to Glacier right. Bay National Park because mm -hmm. that is something to behold. But um mm -hmm. And that, you know, it's it's neat. There's just a lot of nuance between the different cruise lines. Yeah. Thanks for saying that. That's perfect. Anything else? Everybody hit your thumbs up. I am yeah. so late. I was <laughs> really worried. Oh, how do you hook up your CPAP? I use an extension cord. Um, take it with me. Yeah. <laughs> Though so sometimes on Princess, the, the plug is right next to the head of the bed. So yeah. don't need an extension cord. Hopefully we're starting to see more and more of that. But yeah, every every most everywhere I go, I've got to carry that 15 foot extension cord. Yeah. 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 But the nice thing is with that mini, you don't need to worry about the uh the water because yeah. you've got the, the built in humidifying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the best. Yeah. yeah. This one. What, uh, large cruise ships. Do you think the ship and do you think the ship and the Priva? Miss the rest of the anyway. Question. No, I I think they're I think they're yeah. awesome. Oh, here's a here's one for Tony. Who has the best casino at sea? Chucky. What's up, Chuck? Uh, I don't know. Jen, I think Jenny actually spends more time in the casino. Okay, uh, my dear. I'm so excited you won, by the way. Oh, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> that was going to run on to the sailing sign. Um, I think that the best casino at sea is probably Princess for me. Oh, yeah. Um, only because of the offers that come back. I feel like the casino staff is just different. Uh -huh. um, they're very attentive uh, with their, you know, bringing over, you know, water or whatever your needs are. Uh -huh. And Royal's, Royal's really good, too. I like Royal, uh -huh. too, because um, with the smoking and the non-smoking, they have it, like, together. But on that non-smoking side, uh -huh. you don't really smell it as often. Uh -huh. And I was just thinking about it from a transactional perspective. So we'll start with Norwegian. Norwegian, there's uh, a couple there's insane, a couple sorry. ways you can gamble. You can carry a lot of cash with you, mm -hmm. or you can charge it to your sale and sign account. Uh -huh. And of course, if you have that backed up with a credit card that you get points on, sometimes uh -huh. that's the way that we choose mm -hmm. to do it. But the challenge is some of these cruise lines will charge you a percentage just to use your money right. on the sale and sign account. So yeah. Norwegian, if you charge money to your room on the slot machine, they charge you a fee. And if you charge money on the tables to get chips or whatever, they mm -hmm. charge you a fee. Carnival does not charge you a fee if you do that through the slot machines, but they do charge you if you do that on the tables. Uh, uh, Royal, I think, charges you if you do it on the tables. Uh -huh. And uh, what's nice about Princess is they don't charge you anywhere. Right. So I guess if I was looking at it from a accessibility to money, uh -huh. <laughs> 
Princess would be the winner there. But I've successfully lost money in all of those casinos. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, what makes it better or worse. But uh, Princess is really good, though, if you do go and put the time in and you gamble. Uh, mm -hmm. They're not going to charge you any fees on your money, which is nice. And if you do a decent amount of gambling, they're going to offer you uh, free cruises or free play. So Princess might be the winner in that for me. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Well, good. So it is for both of you. So it covers everything. Yeah. 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 Back yeah. to that big ship question, though. I think yeah. the thing that that's not often considered is how much public space is available per passenger. Uh -huh. And the design of the Oasis class cruise ships for Royal and what I believe is true for Icon, uh -huh. is they're designed in a way to disperse the crowds. And so we've mm -hmm. been on more than one Oasis class cruise ship that was, you know, at capacity that didn't feel crowded right. just because they're so big. So I like big cruise ships because I feel like you get more amenities when it comes to entertainment and food mm -hmm. venues and all that stuff. And I think they do a good job of dispersing the crowd. We've been on some smaller cruise ships that have been really crowded. Uh huh. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a weird thing. It's, it's not just as easy as this is big and this is small and uh -huh. it's big. Therefore it's going to be crowded. You have to take in this idea of how much space is available to the public. True. To manage the people. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That's a really good Yeah, and point. here's the rest of his question, oh. talking about private island destinations and our mega ships, the future. I think yeah. private islands are the, a new destination. Do you guys think so? I, I think so. Um, and my, we had a similar question come up a, a couple of days ago. Yeah. Are mega ships the future? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think that, I think they're going to, well, I mean, you see it with NCL, right? Like they they did the mega ships of the Encore and um, the Bliss and and, the, and that category, yeah. and then they went down to the Prima, which is a little bit smaller, um, like kind of yacht feeling. Uh -huh. So uh, I'm not real sure. What do you think? I mean, I think I think the cruise lines know that they're they're people that want to cruise all different sizes, and so I think it would behoove them to make sure that they keep all different sizes. I do think that they get good economies of scale on mega cruise ships, that they're able to really make a lot of money on these mega cruise ships, mm -hmm. cost a lot of money to build these mega cruise ships. But yeah. uh, I, I think we'll continue to see cruise ships of all shapes and sizes. And then the private islands are really interesting thing because it's so much easier for the cruise line to bring people to a private island. All the spending is contained for them. But, mm -hmm. you know, and I've had this, I've been kicking this question around with several people. Does it, does it uh, annoy the local, the locals, right? Does it annoy the local governments? We saw recently uh, that the Bahamas, now they're introducing a 10% value added tax mm -hmm. on private mm -hmm. islands. And so, it's a wild play. They made it really advantageous for cruise lines to lease space out in the Bahamas to build these private islands. Uh, nine years, no value added tax. Yeah. But now that they see the predominance of the private island, all of a sudden, well, we'd like to get some of that money. So it's it's an interesting thing. Like, how do you, you know, how do you build these private destinations without? Uh, you know, kind of turning off the local uh, governments that you're working with. I yeah. think that's going to be an interesting thing that you'll see play out in cruising in the industry over the next few years. But mm -hmm. I think the cruise line, the private island is easy peasy. If they can build a dock there, drop off 5,000 people and, you know, sell you stuff and sell you experiences and private mm -hmm. lots and water parks, then it's money, money, money. And it's that's a lot right. easier than dropping people off in a, you know, a foreign country. Well, and also, you know, at the private destinations, the private islands, yeah. most of the time, you know, they're selling all of that. And on the ship, people that aren't getting off, the casino's still open. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So, like, they're getting revenue all over the place. So, I mean, it, it really does benefit the cruise line to, to sail there. To go yeah. there. And I've also had the thought that when they draw people off at the private island, they can control their whole experience. Not only do they get all their money, but they don't have to worry about managing excursions or anything. Yeah. They have everything set up so people will have a great time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Of this. Oh, thanks, Eleanor. We feel like we hit the jackpot yeah. as well. So yeah. Well, we wanted to keep it to an hour tonight. Yeah. Oh, that's it's seven o'clock yeah. already here. Okay. So I'm trying to go through and see if there's any no. anything. We we pretty much talked about a lot of 
We sorry if we missed any of your questions, but yeah, thanks gosh, for coming. We appreciate everyone. everybody being here. On your way out, hit the thumbs up if you haven't already, and the subscribe. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and Tony and Jenny, really, thank you. Tony and Jenny, really, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. Well, thank you so much. We, we really appreciate it. Gratitude. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was great sitting and chatting with everybody. And, and you guys, thank you for inviting us. We really so, appreciate it. Thanks for coming. We sure love you both. So <laughs> thank you. You take good care. And we'll be talking to you all again really soon. God bless you. Thank you. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.